Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process to get from raw, what I call raw WGS84 coordinate values to NAD83 state plane coordinate values on the official North American datum of 1983, which is what surveyors use. And the reason I'm doing this video is been, I've been working with a couple guys from a local water company. They got some survey grade uh, GPS units that they're using in their GIS department. And the values that they were getting, the NAT83 coordinate values weren't matching what the, what the surveyors at the water company were getting. And they were confused about the difference. It was about a foot and a half. So I got into that problem with them and was trying to help them answer the question and learn some things myself through the process. Um, although I'm not an expert at all the issues we're going to talk about, I, I do hope this video will help some other people that might be having the same problem. And, and this is going to be pretty technical. Um, I will try and introduce concepts at a high level uh, without going down some rabbit holes so that you don't have to be an expert or a land surveyor to understand this video. But So you notice I have a box here. This represents the first step in a three-step process to get from WGS84 to NAT83 state plane coordinates. And this box represents WGS84, which is a horizontal datum, okay, or, or horizontal reference framework. And it has it has some different parts here that I want to talk about. So the first thing to, to note is that WGS84 has an ellipsoid as part of its definition. Okay, the ellipsoid is called GRS80. It was defined in 1980. And an ellipsoid is a mathematical model of the surface of the Earth. So we take the surface of the Earth, and we best fit an ellipsoid to that shape. Okay, so, And the reason it's an ellipsoid, so an ellipsoid, let me say first, an ellipsoid is just an ellipse rotated around one of its axes. So there's a short axis and a long axis. In this case, the ellipsoid that we're using for the Earth is rotated around its short axis, which is from the North Pole to the South Pole, the vertical axis. Okay. And the reason that the Earth is an ellipsoid and not a perfect sphere is because centrifugal force makes Earth bulge a little bit at the equator. So the axis along the equators is a little bit longer than the north-south or the vertical axis. Okay, so we define an ellipsoid. It's called GRS-80. That's what WGS-84 uses. Now, you'll notice here that WGS84, raw, the raw values that are coming out of the receiver, there's no geoid applied. Okay? So the geoid, a geoid model, it's actually called a geoid model. A geoid model is a model of Earth's gravity, gravity field. Okay, So the, the gravity, the gravity field on Earth is shaped like a potato. So if, if the whole Earth was covered in, in a giant ocean um, that was perfectly smooth, there was no waves or ripples, um, that that shape would not be a perfect ellipsoid. It would actually look a little more like a potato. And that's because of changes in Earth's gravity field. Okay? And the, the, although I, I'm not an expert, the way it's been explained to me is that those differences in the gravity field have to do with the density of the uh, material in the Earth's crust. So there's portions of the Earth's crust that are more dense, more more massive than others, and that creates those distortions and what would otherwise be a a perfectly round uh, gravity field. So we're not dealing with that yet. Okay. And we're also not applying a map projection, which is a mathematical uh, formula to take uh, the round earth and make it flat. Okay. So what we're getting out of our software and our receiver, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, is we're getting a latitude and a longitude and an ellipsoid height on the WGS84 horizontal datum. Okay, or the, the, the datum. Now, let's talk about what your GPS receiver actually measures for a minute. So the GPS receiver is actually measuring what's called ranges to a set of satellites. Okay, ranges or distances. And it's using those distances to triangulate its position. So it uses the, the distance ranges to the satellites and the calculated position of the satellites, which are sent down. Part, it's sent down on what's called a broadcast ephemeris. I don't want to get totally in the weeds there, but 
uh, uses those ranges and the and the calculated position of those satellites to come up with its own position. Okay, and then the, the software on board converts those distance ranges into a latitude, longitude, ellipsoid height. So I just want you to remember that there is some onboard software doing some calculations here to get from the satellite, the ranges to the satellites, to a latitude, longitude. Okay, so depending on how that software is configured, you might get slightly different results here. All right, so I just want to point that out. All right, now let's look at the next step in this process. So let me turn that on. And so the next step in this process is to move to what I call generic NAT83. Okay. And we do that with what's called a seven parameter transformation. Okay. And now let's just, we'll talk about this a little bit more and I have a, a picture to show you, but let's just look at the, the uh, elements of this generic NAT83 horizontal datum. Okay. So we have the same ellipsoid. Okay. So we're not changing the shape of the ellipsoid. It's the same. Okay. We still haven't applied a geoid yet. Okay, but we are going to add a map projection usually at this step, and state plane coordinates in California uses what's called a Lambert, a Lambert conf, conic conformal projection. You can look that up at Wikipedia. There's a nice article there with some diagrams. Okay, and what we're getting out of that, after we apply the seven parameter transformation and the map projection, we're getting a northing and easting in feet, and we still get, and it's the the ellipsoid height doesn't change. Now, I just point out, you can't do a whole lot with these ellipsoid heights, okay, because they're not elevations, so that's not very helpful, and we'll talk about what surveyors do to deal with that. Now, let's talk about some of the differences between raw WGS-84 and this generic NAT-83. So, although they use the same ellipsoid, they put the ellipsoid in different places. Okay, WGS-84 takes the GRS-80 ellipsoid and pins it or locates it at the center of mass of the earth okay and the center of mass is calculated by watching how satellites orbit the earth so a group of satellites will orbit the earth around the center of mass so if you observe those satellites you can triangulate where that center of mass is and wgs84 puts the grs80 the center of the ellipsoid the grs80 ellipsoid at the center of mass okay? and it does that because the point of wgs84 is to get a horizontal datum that fits well with the entire Earth. That's what you want if you're going to drop bombs or fly cruise missiles. Okay, So WGS-84 best fits GRS-80 to the whole Earth, and it does that by locating at the center of mass. Now, NAD-83 takes that same ellipsoid, same shape, GRS-80, and it best fits it to the North American tectonic plate, okay, or to the North American continent. Okay. And the reason they do that, NAT83, the reason that NAT83 does that is because they're trying to create a good survey datum for North America. They don't care about what's going on in Australia. Now, when I say they, who are the people that are doing this? Okay, Well, that's the National Geodetic Survey. That's an agency of the federal government. They're in the Department of Commerce. Okay, So they are defining this datum okay, by moving GRS-80 from the center of the Earth to best fit the North American plate, and we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk in this next step about how they actually do that. Okay, but you can take a generic seven-parameter transformation, apply it to WGS84 with no ties to any physical monuments or to, to cores, and you can get this generic NAT83, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay? And so my water company was actually doing this in ArcGIS. They were taking their raw WGS84. Latitude and longitudes, they were doing the transformation in ArcGIS. They were telling ArcGIS, we want NAT83. And what ArcGIS is doing behind the scenes is it's just applying the seven-parameter transformation. Okay? And then a map projection, and it was giving them northings and eastings okay? and ellipsoid heights. So let's talk for a minute about... Sorry. Let's talk for a minute about what that uh, seven-parameter transformation looks like. If I can get it up on my screen here. All right. So here's a, a diagram of that seven parameter transformation that I stole from online. So look at this black set of three axes on the on the in the black color here. Let's imagine that's WGS84. Okay, so this origin of the coordinate system here is at the center of mass, like we talked about. Okay. 
And what you do with that seven parameter transformation is you apply an XYZ shift to the center of the coordinate system, moves it up here. Okay. And then you also apply three rotations. So there's one along the north, the uh, vertical axis of the earth, the north pole, south pole. Okay. There's one along the Greenwich Meridian, and there's one along the line, the line of lo longitude or the plane of longitude at 90 degrees to the Greenwich Meridian. Okay. That moves you from WGS84 to NAT83 just with the application of these seven generic parameters. Okay. That's what ArcGIS is doing behind the scenes. All right, so let's talk now about what's the next step here, okay? The next step in this process, so let's look at that. So the next step in the process is, after you've applied the seven parameter transformation is, you need to apply an XYZ shift, a smaller shift, okay, to get onto NAT83 per course. So let me talk about that for a minute. CORE stands for Continually Operating Reference Station. It's just a GPS receiver that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, and they're scattered across the United States, and NGS uses those CORES to define NAT83. So it says, we're going to use these physical points, okay, these control points, to define how we're going to fit GRS80 to the North American plate. And in the old days, they would do that with physical monuments. Now they do it with these, what they call an active station. It runs all the time, okay? It's actually the antenna point of the receiver is given a northing and easting coordinate and a latitude and longitude in NAT83, okay? And we're going to look at that in, the, in, in a minute. So just give me a minute, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. Now, let me just go over some, of, some other abbreviations since we talked about what cores mean. WGS-84 stands for the World Geodetic System of 1984. That's when it was defined. And it's easy to remember, World Geodetic System, because we're best fit to the, the whole Earth, the world. NAT-83 is the North American datum of 1983. That's when it was defined. And, it, and we, it's easier to remember because we're best fit to the North American plate here, right? That's why it's called NAD. All right, let me show you a couple quick... Uh, screenshots here. I want to show you uh, where the cores are in the United States, and then uh, we're going to take a quick look at a data sheet, so hang tight. All right, so I have a map here of the cores. This comes from the official NGS site, and you can see there are hundreds of cores in the United States. Let me just zoom in a little on California, my part of California. So you can see there's all kinds of core stations here. If you click on them, you'll get this, uh, it tells you the name of the station. Okay, so you have to tie into one of these stations to be on the official North American datum of 1983. Now, let me show you a data sheet. I'm going to click on Get Site Info here because I want to show you how NGS uses those stations to define uh, to d define the datum. So I'm going to pull up the data sheet here. Just give me a second while it loads. Okay, so I've got the data sheet loaded. Let me pull this over to where you guys can see it because I'm only recording a part of my screen. Okay, so here's what an NGS data sheet looks like. Now, you notice right here, out of the gate, they give us a latitude and longitude. This is on NAT83. These are not WGS84 values. Okay, the whole point of a cores is to give you latitude and longitude values on NAT83, best fit to the North American plate. That's why we have cores. Now, let me just scroll down and show you if you're a land surveyor, they also give you the state plane values for that point in NAT83. These are not WGS84 state plane values. They are, there. They are NAT83 values, northing and easting. Okay, And you'll also see they give us an ellipsoid height. Okay, Now, there's no elevation shown. I'm not going to get into the details of why that is, um, but they, they do give us a geoid height here, which you can use to calculate an elevation if you need to, and you can see... Geoid 12B, we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? All right, so enough about that. So what I want you to understand here is it's important to understand that in order to get on the official North American datum, you have to have a tie to cores, okay? And you also need a geoid model, geoid 
So the latest geoid, official geoid, is geoid 12B, as we saw in the data sheet. The geoid gives you elevations instead of ellipsoid heights, which is what you want. And the tide of cores puts you on the official datum. Okay, and you can actually see that in the diagram here. I've let you know that to get to NAT83, the official datum per core is not this generic datum, but the official datum defined by NGS, you have to tie to a core station and you need a geoid model. Okay. Now, in my case, the difference between the generic NAT83 that you get by applying the seven parameter transformation and the actual official datum that the surveyors are working on is about one and a half feet. And that's why the water company was confused. They didn't understand why, after they applied the seven parameter transformation in ArcGIS, why they weren't matching their surveyors. And to be honest with you, I didn't understand it either until we started digging into this. Okay. Now, let me just explain for a minute that the land surveyors, a lot of the surveyors that are, <laughs> a lot of surveyors don't understand this. When they take out their survey gear, um, they are working on a real-time network. So they most surveyors have a commercial, a subscription to a commercial, it's called a real-time network. And I want you guys to understand that there's a software stack in the real-time network. So there's a server somewhere that has a stack of software on it that takes the raw WGS84 values calculated by the software in the receiver. It applies a seven-parameter transformation. Then it applies the XYZ shift to get to this box down here. And most surveyors may not even understand that's going on in the background, but that's what's happening. Okay, So the, the, the real-time network software is taking care of these two transformations for us. right? Now, because my GIS guys at the water company are tapping right into these raw WGS84 values, they've got to complete these two steps if they want to get to where their surveyors are at. Okay. Now, here's the, the challenge. ArcGIS will apply this generic seven parameter transformation. I do not know that ArcGIS will apply a geoid model and this specific XYZ shift through a tie to cores. So if somebody knows how to do that in ArcGIS, I'd love to see that in the comments. Um, I don't think with the particular software setup and equipment setup that, that my buddies have, they're gonna be able to do that. They, they can apply this seven parameter transformation, but they're not gonna be able to apply this uh, shift the way they want, uh, I think, without some uh, without just applying a, a generic XYZ shift, we could back calculate it. Maybe they could apply it in ArcGIS, but it's it's not something they can just grab from a drop down. You know, there is no drop down menu in ArcGIS that says take me from NAD generic NAD eighty three to NAD eighty three per course. So I just wanted to make make a point make that point. All right, I think I've explained most of what I wanted to in this video. Um, I know I'm about twice as long as I use. I like to keep these to 10 minutes. We're almost 20 minutes. Uh, there's all kinds of, of rabbit holes we could go down here, and I may do some more videos that talk a little bit about the differences um, between these three systems, talks more about ellipsoids and geoid models. But uh, hopefully this will make a little more sense for, for people that are struggling with the with the idea or the challenge that their, their WGS84 coordinates that they're getting out of a, a GIS equipment setup isn't matching what surveyors are getting out of their real-time network. Now I am going to do another video for sure that shows you how these transformations work in my software that I use as a land surveyor to, to deal with GPS data. It's called Trimble Business Center because it wasn't as clear-cut as I thought and, it, and in fact I think it might even be a little buggy. So I am going to do another video and, uh, and explain that and I'll try and post the link to that video in the comment section here, the description section for this particular video. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps somebody uh, besides me. And a big shout out here to my buddy Fernando at the water company. I hope this video helps him as well.